what's up in Minnesota for today? So these are the updates. So of course, you know that these are cases we've seen before that weren't complete. Now they're completed. We're going to give you the conclusion on them. And I, I am going to probably uh, give you the uh, the valet classification definitions on these because it's it's not always easy to remember when you're just kind of going through the updates to be nice to know what we're talking about. So 133472-U uh, took place on August 23rd of this year at Oval was seen class. Uh, FB1, so a flyby of the first kind, so basically a UFO by flying by in the sky. So um, description saw a UFO, it was a big orange ball with no tail, far away, didn't move really fast, posted a video. Um, Steve Hero was investigating it. Steve Hero's got it completed. Let's see what Steve Hero found out. We had a, I didn't, I don't think I pulled the file for this one, so we don't have this in the video folder, but. What in the hell is that? responsibility should be the model behavior we want others to follow on education the only way we change education in this nation is to break the backs of the teachers unions they are standing in the doorhouse of our kids the hell was that it was glowing orange ball going across the damn sky and it is disappearing now Um, Steve's calling it an unknown UAV. So after watching the video a few times, I noticed a faint flash coming from the object that would most likely rule out any type of Chinese lantern. Witness claimed he was in the military, claimed that what he saw was definitely not a plane or a helicopter. Going to classify this as an unknown UAV based on the witness testimony, even though there's a slight possibility that it's related to the airport is located only five miles to the south. So thank you, Steve. Did you want to comment on this case at all, Steve, or no? Uh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't that unusual. Okay, cool. All right, case number 132482 U took place on July 15th of this year. A sphere was seen, MA1. So, MA1 is a maneuver of the first kind. So, gathers UFO observations that involve an object with a discontinuous tra trajectory, such as a drop, a maneuver, or a loop. Uh, seen in Cabida Goma, Cabido Gama in St. Louis County, which Camp is up. Goma. Was it? Camp Goma. Yeah, what Jared said. That's what it is. Uh, various lights near appear overhead to the east. Peter Collins was working on it. Uh, let's see what Peter determined on this one. So, uh, IFO natural phenomenon. So, this is uh, the Peter loves putting the witness names in his description. So, I have to chop them out. Witness does not believe he saw meteors, but something else which could not be identified. Witness compares the sightings to meteors in his report, where witness saw the lights were in the that lake, which is now in the per per Perseid meteor shower sightings from mid July to August. And he says, if you've been contemplating adding a dark sky space to your summer destination, that lake in Voyager's National Park during the 2023 Perseid meteor showers is a perfect place to visit. You won't be disappointed at the marvelous meteors passing across the already vivid night sky in northern Minnesota. So based on the location being known for meteor sightings and the witness's description of what he, he saw, he's concluded these were meteors, so natural phenomena. So thank you, Peter, for that. And case number 131758-U took place on June 19th of this year at 9.50 p.m. A circle was seen. Again, ballet MA1, so a maneuver like we just talked about in St. Joseph. Um, if you hear the rumbling coming from above, walk halfway down the driveway, you can see it all over the place. Couldn't find an airplane. So Bill Palmieri was working on this. Uh, let's see, completed as an unknown UAV. So here's just a segment of what Bill came up with. That's actually Bill McNeff came up with this. If we assume that the witness, oh, I remember this one, because when you looked at this, the findings were really, really, really long and had Bill had all the stats and data and all his websites, all this stuff on there. That, so Bill did a really thorough job checking this. So if we assume that the witness estimates of time and distance are approximately correct, the UAV made a circle approximately nine miles in circumference in 15 seconds, which is about 2,200 miles per hour, supporting the witness statement that the UAV went super fast. Note that the craft displayed no FAA required lights. U.S. military craft in action are not required to display such lights, but for ordinary flights, they should. Based on all this, I conclude, witness cited an unknown aerial vehicle and the disposition of unknown UAV. So, Bill McNeff, thank you very much for your work on that, Bill. Bill, did you want to comment on this one at all? No, that's good. No, okay. Okay, so our new case, so we've got a lot of new cases. So if you think back last month, I commented that we had very few cases. We had four cases come in, which I said our average is about six to eight. So four was really low. This month we had 11 in, which is well well above our average. So, but if you take last month's four and this month's 11, it gives you 15 and average that out is seven and a half, which puts us right in our average six to eight. But yeah, a lot of cases this month. The only thing is one of the cases is an ERT case. So we won't be looking at that, but we'll look at the other 10 cases that are not ERT cases. So, uh, so here's our case summary. We had 11 cases, one's ERT. Submission date range is uh, the, the 10th of, so the day of our last meeting through yesterday. Date range of the sightings is 4 11 1962 through 10 7 2023. The 4 11 1962, 
that's our ERT case. So I'm not going to tell you any more about that. So that's all you're getting on that one. You're getting the date. Um, we have one case of interest, and that's not the ERT case. And we're going to look at two spheres, two circles, one oval, one teardrop, one fireball, one other, one disc, one tic tac, and one no listing. I think the one no listing is the ERT case. So as far as ballet classifications that we're going to see today, we're going to see one AN4. So an AN4 is an anomaly of the fourth kind. So MUFON defines an anomaly of the fourth kind as uh, those anomalous reports in which witnesses experience personal interaction with entities in the reality of the entities themselves. They include near-death experiences, religious miracles and visions, and many cases of out-of-body experiences. So we've got one AN4. You can see one CE1, close encounter of the first kind. So MUFON defines that as class of objects seen on the ground or a short distance to the observer. We're going to look at one CE3, so close encounter of the third kind. Um, MUFON defines that as a class of close encounters that involve entities or occupants. We're going to see three FB1, so three flybys of the first kind. Uh, an FB1 is a simply a sighting of a UFO flying by in the sky, a category most frequently reported. We're going to look at one FB2, so FB2 is defined as uh, flyby accompanied by physical evidence, so some trace evidence for that. Um, and four MA1, so MUFON defines a MA1 as a gathers as UFO observations that involve the object with a discontinuous trajectory, such as a drop maneuver or loop, just like we talked about in the update. So those are the ones we're going to see, except, except one of them is the DRT, so we won't see all those, but we'll see 10 out of those 11. So let's jump right in. What do we got? So case number 133944-U took place on September 9, 2023 at 8.22 p.m. A circle was seen, FB1, so fly by the first kind, and I missed the location on that because they, they're doing something where the location's like in the case and not listed so anyways morehead so, morehead oh, oh look at the investigator on the case she knows exactly where it was so more she get morehead for those of you online this case is from morehead traveling orange bright light a group of five of us were sitting in my driveway having a bonfire the time was 8 22 p.m in the eastern sky about halfway up the horizon a bright orange white light appeared it traveled parallel to the ground it was moving very fast and appeared to pick up speed as it headed north no sound, no tail, it just suddenly appeared and suddenly disappeared, lasting four to five seconds. So Anna was assigned to it and she's completed it. Uh, were there attachments to this one? No attachments to it. There's no attachments, okay. So completed unknown other. So it's possible this was a very bright plus a three satellite uh, that was not listed on satellite trackers due to military ownership, especially being it would have been in a polar orbit. However, the witness was certain it was not outside of the atmosphere due to its apparent size, distance and familiarity of satellites. He reports consistent with the size of a golf ball held at arm's length, which would rule out satellites. There was no flicker or sway, and light moved in a straight line for exceeding the wind speed of seven miles per hour and suddenly appeared and disappeared. So it is not consistent with the Chinese lantern. No fireballs reported to AMS, no planes in the area for flight radar 24, no air traffic responders noted in the area of Moorhead Airport. Case closed with the disposition of unknown other due to no structure with the light noted. Did you want to comment on this case at all? Um, sure. So I think one of the most interesting things about this case is there was five witnesses. Um, the witness that I interviewed um, is a high school science teacher. Um, two of the other witnesses were professors in um, universities in that area. So very high quality witnesses, um, and none of them seemed to have any idea what it was. So that's why he reported it, and neither do I. <laughs> cool, cool. Thank you for your work on that. Case number 133988 U took place on July 24th of 2022, 12 26 p.m. A tic tac was seen, FB1, so fly by the first kind, which Oak Grove, which is in Anoka County. We rounded the bend and the object was no longer visible. The detailed description was they said, in the picture, I left the metadata for you, zoom into the picture above the oncoming car. And I think we have one picture, and I think three videos, videos on this. But let me take a look. So, uh, yeah, so here's the first picture, and here is what he is looking at. He's looking at that right there, that big blimpy like thing I'm looking out of there. So, I think the rest is uh oh no, there must not because I may have to be sure I noted slides if there were other ones in there. So uh complete as the IFO man-made object. The witness was riding in his car with his wife driving when he saw an object in the sky just over the trees. The witness thought the object was about a thousand feet above the ground. He then got a cell phone out, took a picture of it, and at this time a woods got in his line of sight, and a minute later he cleared the trees and it was gone. The picture showed what looks like a blimp. Last summer there was a blimp with a sign on it. Work in the city with ads. The photograph looks just like the other photos from last summer. In my opinion, it was the blimp. So, and Bill, did you want to comment on this one at all or no? Well, I did. When he had the comments on the inside of his picture, I couldn't find it. Okay. Okay. I when I talked to him, so I didn't have all the Right, right. And Mike has a question. I'm curious. He took the picture. Um, he took the 
So the picture was taken by the witness and the car is unrelated, right? I believe that car is unrelated, yes. Unless unless the blimp is a Goodyear blimp and the car's tires have Goodyear on it, but I really don't, I can't tell from this. What's that? What was this? Where was it? This was in uh, Oak Grove in Elby County on July 24th. Oh, fine, fine. You think so? Well, it looks like it could be a little bit away from the airport. But... Yeah, well, I see what you mean. If you take the glare out, like the glare kind of makes it look like there's a wing there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, okay. So, so case number 13399 1 U took place on September 12, 2023, at 9 p.m. A disc was seen FB2 in Carlstad, which is in Kits Kitson County. Uh, short description disc like object covered in emitting colors. And then the detailed description I couldn't tell what it was. It moved strangely and seemed to be color changing. This one, I think we had attached. Or let's see what we got. And there's not, actually, you want to turn off the lights in the back because there's not a lot to see here. It's kind of tough to see, but if you can get the lights, that'd help. So. <laughs> Oh, he's still up the stairs at this point. Okay. Oh, it, uh, look at the northern lights. You're going to see it right in this area, I think. It's really faint. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, it's right, right there. Right in the middle. Yep. But there's something flashing. Red, blue, green. Okay, cool. Okay, and click it so I can advance. Yep. Click. Oh. And so it's completed as an unknown UAV. So since the witness claims that the lights were flashing and changing colors, that would most likely rule out some type of commercial aircraft. Commercial aircraft only have red and green navigational lights and a white strobe. Since he lives in a very rural area, that would eliminate most drones. And the witness also claims that the object was disc shaped. So I'll classify this as an unknown UAV. Uh, so that was Steve Hero. Thank you, Steve. For that. Steve, did you want to comment on this one at all or no? Uh, he had better videos. I asked him, I said, don't you have something better than that? And he did, and he sent it to me, and I could not download it. So then I asked him to send me another one. I couldn't download that one either, so. Hmm. Okay, well, thank you for your work on that. Case number 134130 U took place on September 13th, 2023 at 4 22 p.m. The shape was an other, a valet classification FB1 supply by Maplewood. White shape changing object appeared to be descending. Uh, so this is just a segment of what they are saying. Uh, Heading to a gym in Roseville, driving northbound at 35E, I noticed something white and orb like about 30 degrees above the tree line in the northwest. It was the beginning of rush hour, so I wanted to take my phone out and film it so I could keep my eyes on the road. After watching this video, it appeared to change its shape from orb like to cylindrical shape to a non descriptive shape. I watched for about a minute until it slowly descended from about 500 feet down to the tree line, where it disappeared behind the trees and appeared to land somewhere between Larpenter Avenue East and Roselawn Avenue East west of 35E and east of uh, Dale Street North, possibly the McCarran's Lake in uh, Roseville, Minnesota. It might be a uh, deflated balloon falling from the sky or a large garbage bag open to interpretation. So Jared looked at this and he's completed it. But we've got pictures, I think pictures and videos. We have three pictures and a, three pictures and a video, I think. So, so and this is, a, so obviously, it's, so here's what we're looking at right here is this one. And then here it's right, right there is what we're looking at. And then here, it's obviously right in the center. And the video is interesting. Well, and after the video, we'll stop it. We'll see if you guys can guess what it is. We'll see what Jared determined it was. So, so uh, yeah, so video 134130. There's only one video on this one, correct? the fact that he saw an aircraft. The aircraft was assessed in a 680 in the traffic pattern landing at downtown St. Paul Downtown Airport, KSTP. 
The fact that it appeared to change shape is consistent with the sunlight off the aircraft as it was turning in the traffic pattern. A quick review of metadata to go revealed the video was actually taken on September 19th at 1435 in the afternoon. I then compared to uh, determined the exact location of the witness, compared these data points to flightradar24.com. Upon doing so, I discovered that flight EJA 627, a Cessna citation, owned and operated by NetJets, was the exact location at that time. The jet had just entered the traffic pattern of KSTP for landing, initially on an extended letdown for runway 14. The witness continued to film the aircraft as it turned left on the base leg and then final towards runway 14. The aircraft was descending, descending for the entire time, which is consistent with the object appearing to descend in the video. This position, IFO, man-made objects, Cessna 680, Jared Nelson. So thank you, Jared, for that. Uh, any, if you want to comment on that at all, Jared? Well, no, that, that really kind of wraps it up right there. It was just an aircraft in the traffic pattern, and it looked strange because the way that the sun was shining off, it so kind of changed shape or whatever, and the guy's trying to drive, so I can, I can understand why I got confused. Yep, yep, cool. Thank you very much for your work on that. Case number 134259 e took place on September 23rd, 2023, 1035. Given Oval was seen, CD1, so close encounter of the first kind, in Albert Lee. Uh, it was a windy night, rain pounding on windows, saw oval object with a small dome, bright lights in the middle, red light on the bottom. Their detailed description, they said oval object with some small dome, bright lights in the middle, three or four red lights on the bottom, hovered for about five to seven minutes, red lights went off and then slowly backed up into the clouds and was gone. So uh, Bill McNeff is investigating this, it's in progress. I don't think there's any attachments on this one. Um, no, did you want to comment on that one at all, Bill, or no? Just kind of get started on it? Very close to completion. I thought I completed that case. Oh. At any rate, uh, uh, the observer's uh, description was so insistent, even though they didn't have the picture or video, that uh, I will uh, include that to be an unknown, unidentified object. Okay. By the way, I don't think it says so in there, but it is a windy, rainy, and stormy night. Yep. And I would not expect anyone to be flying with drones in that weather. And even if they were, the description did not match what this witness saw. Right. And I pulled this yesterday afternoon. So if you closed it last night, this would be outdated. But if you thought you closed it days ago, this is what it was yesterday afternoon. That, that's it then. Okay. Uh, so case number 134373 U E. So U for U O E for entity. I uh, was seen on June 1st, 2016. Uh, 7 p.m. A sphere was seen, close encounter of the third kind in Bloomington. I saw a white orb. Stranger said it was a hoax. And this was an interesting thing because he saw the orb. He was really intrigued by it. He pulled over in his car. He got out, ran up on a hill, started taking pictures of it. But he had a really detailed description. But I just cut the part that I thought was really interesting. So here's a segment of what he said. About a minute after arriving at the hilltop, I heard a man speak to me saying, hey, hey. I felt a tap on my shoulder. I turned around. A white man stood behind me and said, it's okay. It's a hoax. I'm sorry. He then proceeded to show me a rope line attached to a nearby tree and extending in the direction of the orb. He explained that there was a kite far out in the sky and that there was a light attached on the line between, between the tree and the kite. He said he intended to hover over a nearby city office building adjacent to Highway 494 and that the weather didn't cooperate with his plan. I was satisfied with his explanation at the time. He appeared as a normal looking white American man in his early 30s. Looking back, I wonder if he wasn't what he appeared to be. I wonder if what I saw wasn't what I have believed. Was it a hoax or was the man inter I interacted with a uh, shape shifting being? Was the orb I saw not simply light attached to a kite? I don't know. So it is really weird because I can't imagine someone coming up and tapping on the shoulder going, oh no, sorry, it's it's me, it's a hoax. It just the whole thing seems kind of odd. So I'm kind of curious. So this is in progress. You didn't finish this one either yet, did you, Bill? No, but my tentative conclusion is that uh, it was in fact a, a hoax, just as this man told him. Okay. I'm theorizing that he had a friend uh, who, who was interested in UFOs in this one office building, and he was going to fool his friend, mm. and uh, he didn't calculate his wind properly. <laughs> so uh, I, I see no reason to, to disbelieve that it was simply a hoax in progress. Right, okay, cool. So, and I don't, there's no attachments to this one. So case number 134475U, this, this is the case of interest. It took place on September 25th of this year at 9 p.m. A sphere was seen, again, another MA1 in Ely, a Boundary Waters Canoe area, multiple craft sighted. 
uh, at 2100 hours on 9 25 2023 multiple objects appeared then disappeared in the sky object sun colored and brighter than venus in the night sky not washed out whatsoever by the waxing gibbous moon objects appeared in various positions in the sky disappearing simultaneously and seemingly multiplying as many as six at, at times as many as six would appear in a cluster after 20 minutes they were gone on 9 26 2023 the objects appeared again Briefly performing what appeared to be the replication, then dis disappearing after several minutes. So this has been assigned to Peter Collins. I think this one's got some attachments. I think it's just pictures and no video, but let's see what we got here. So, oh no, so there's three videos. There's three videos for this one. One, one three, three, four, seven, five. I don't think, yeah, one, three, three, four, seven, five should be three different videos. Okay, she's not in the Play. Whoa. Why are they so far away? What the, what the wow. He's like a speech. Dude, it's a whole, it's a whole, there's like there's six more. of them. There's, yeah, there's multiple. Take the binoculars and look, 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 look at them. Look, 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 look. But yeah, there's, I could see it. And then again, in the top two the... more appeared. Dude. <gasps> Dad, let me see it from you guys. <laughs> All right, I'm getting more wine. Okay. I know you don't share the folder. When, you, when you're sharing the folder, don't share the folder. Pull it up here and then share the video. That's, that's what we're doing. We got it. Jason, they're back. There, you can see it, it, a dim flashing. Yeah. Now for the third video, since you're already sharing the media player, just pull up the folder and click on the thing, the next video, and hopefully it'll still share the media player and, and it'll be able to check if that's correct. So are you seeing this, Anna, or no? Okay, cool. Yes. I have my moments. Do you see the sparkles? No, I can't. They're over there flashing. I, I don't see those. Just barely faintly right there. There's a flash. Oh, there it is. Okay. Here we go. Cool. That should be just three videos now. So we can go back to the PowerPoint. You're plugging. Cool. Oh, I can right. back it. That's right. So one, three, four. So yeah, once we get that one completed, we'll fill you in on what the results of that one was. Case number one, three, four, five, six, seven dash U took place on July 28th, 2023 at 10 30 p.m. A fireball was seen. MA1 in Cloquette. Orb like objects. Here's just a segment of what the uh, witness said on, on the night of uh, 7 28, 2023. I came home from the store just at dusk. I was thinking a lot about the recent testimony in Congress by David Grush about thinking about the possibilities. I looked up in the sky in a what if, what if state of mind. To my surprise, there was an orange white star like object that seemed out of place. It was bigger and brighter than the other stars becoming visible. So, Steve Hero is working on that one. I don't think there's any attachments on this one. So, um, oh, there is. So we and I don't more than one. I think there's there's I think there were four there, and I just spoke to him yesterday, and he sent me these more. I think this is there three pictures in a video on this one. So, so this is a I'm assuming that he he's talking about this right here, obviously. And then so let's see, this is a here's a close up of the same thing, and then uh, another close up. So I don't know if he's putting a filter on the on the picture or what's happening there. So but and I think. Oh, there was a fourth image, fourth image. Okay, so no video on this one. So, yeah, no video. So, once, uh, did you want to comment on this one at all, Steve? No, I was waiting for the, the uh, additional photos. 
but he gave a deep, very detailed description. And whatever that thing was, it was dancing all over the place. Yep, yep, for sure. All right, so case number 134584 U took place on 10 6, 2023 at 3 52 p.m. A teardrop was seen, MA1 maneuver, the first kind in Hermantown, which is St. Louis County. I saw one green orb, one large object, and one small dashing across the sky and then stationary in the sky. So here's just a segment of what they said. I was on my back deck taking a break from gardening and decided to take a video of the beautiful trees and sky. It wasn't until I was showing my video to my partner that I caught the fast movements of black against the blue sky. They were so fast and far away, so I edited the video to slow it down and watch it again. They were great, and, and there they were, greenish, bluish orbs were. So we've got, I think, one photograph and I think three videos. So in the videos, you're going to see it, it is moving fast. You'll see a couple black things move pretty fast, and you'll see another little dot, but if you can catch them, they are pretty fast. But he's got, I think there's a, a photograph first, so... So yeah, this is the photograph. But you actually don't see that much in the video, but this is from the video. But um, I think this is a, yeah, three videos. So one, three, four, five, eight, four in the folder there. So I think it's the same footage, just slowed down. But you'll see if you can catch them. They do, they do go by pretty fast. Did anyone here in the room catch that? It's in it's in the next video too, but there's a couple black things that go by really fast. So. Yeah, toward the on that on that right side. Same video right in the area of the And the third video is the same thing, but slower, so. Catch that time. Okay. Yeah, there's the second one which from buying. Okay, go back to PowerPoint, please. So we'll revisit that one once it's completed. So case number 134596-U took place on 10 7 2023 at 8.33 p.m. A circle was seen, MA1, so maneuver of the first kind in Forest Lake. The crazy thing is, and you can see it for yourself, but it looks like the UAP disappeared into a portal. I witnessed three to seven orbs that were kind of traveling along in no set path or even direction. It just kind of appeared out of nowhere and most disappeared in the same fashion. However, at the end of the video, around the three minute mark, and through the duration after, you can see what looks to be a portal or cylinder shaped light. When that light and the UAP merge, everything disappears. And honestly, it looked like the UAP had vanished through a portal. So Bill has been assigned to Bill. Um, I think we've got one picture on there. So this is the picture. Uh, yeah, because that's, so this is the picture. He mentions, he references a video. If you're on our Facebook page, he's posted the whole thing on our Facebook page. So he's, he is talking about this light right here. It is an interesting video. You'll see that light. And I think there's a couple other ones. And at the very end, it is strange because if you imagine, a, imagine this is circular, like a pie plate. So the portal wasn't like this. It was almost like kind of tilted like that. So you didn't really see like a full circular portal. You kind of like saw a slit and the light kind of disappears into it. So it is very strange, but you can go to our Facebook page and check out the video because it is He's posted at least once on our Facebook page. I did watch it. It's a few minutes long, but um, the lights are interesting. But the uh, the whole portal thing at the end is is what's kind of curious too. So, and that's what's up in Minnesota for this month. That wraps it up. So.